Yeah, well, anyway, let's 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 get this ball rolling. Otherwise, it's going to get too late. Um, I'll just keep an eye as Oaks. I mean, obviously, I sent out a message to a long list of people, uh, different media places, gyms. Uh, I just try to keep it limited, but try to get a good mix of of athletes, gyms, jiu-jitsu gyms, MMA gyms, um, just to try and get a spread of knowledge. Uh, people in Cape Town, PE, all over. Like I can't, also can't force people to say yes or no, but it is what it is. Um, They'll be watching, though, bro. No, I know, I know. So I'll, I'll just keep an eye if Oaks come. I know Oaks always late and shit. So the whole point of what I what I want to try and do is, like I said, people are going to watch. So oh, here's Soldier Boy. Let me just wait for him quickly. loading rich is that tea or whiskey what do you think bro i'm asian <laughs> whiskey <laughs> <laughs> it looks suspiciously like pee if i'm honest hello mr soldier boy well, then. gareth can you hear us yeah. Gareth, we can't hear you, eh? I think you're going to have to sorry, check I didn't, your... I didn't greet you, Jamie and Mark. Sorry, man. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, guys? How are you doing? Damn it, Justin. Good. Gareth, just check sorry, on, the, on the bottom corner of your screen somewhere. There should be an audio option, um, like a little mic picture. Just make sure you got your audio on. He knows. We spoke an hour ago. He knows how to use it. He's just forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny when it pauses on the face. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. So, sorry. Anyway, let me just say what I was saying. Because William is here. We can, I don't know if he's just advertising his Forge Mixed Martial Arts or if he's actually... <laughs> so, my, this, this thing is obviously not going, going away anytime soon. Especially not for, for the gyms. Um, just to kind of try and put some sort of resource together. I know just we've spoken, you've got a few ideas of a couple of things, um, which I know a lot of dudes will, will, will look to you to see if you've got any advice on, on, on what's happening. I know Mark, you're always in touch with people um, and, and you've been around seeing, I see you've been speaking to guys from judo and, and on all sorts, Muay Thai and all sorts of stuff. So you, you might have a good feel of what guys are doing out there. And Jamie just likes to cause cuck. That's why he's here. So, I just want to kind of bump head, bump heads together and just see if if there's some guys that have some kind of, you know, like some kind of a resource so guys can come and say, okay, look, well, this is a cool idea. That's a cool idea. Maybe we can implement that. Maybe we can try that. And, and maybe just by chatting, we might just be able to figure a few things out ourselves. Um, and just, yeah, just try and provide whatever sort of support we can because I mean it's obviously it's it's a very testing time and I just don't know when this is going to end especially not for for the gyms involved athletes involved and, and, and so on so it, it's going to be a bit tricky with a couple of guys just I, I just want to start with you um we're gonna we're gonna swerve right around the MMA SA stuff but um you, you've got a small no, nice <laughs> yeah, no, we'll get to that you you've got a small okay. little business idea for guys that if they're going to switch on, if they want to hear it, what they can do and, and, and what you're offering. It's, I mean, it's obviously not going to, you're not going to pay your car off with it, but it might no, help. You, you, you're not, but it was just an idea for some, for some guys to get through. A lot of guys, <clears throat> even though they're good coaches, etc., may not be good businessmen. Um, I think Rich is a little bit different. He's a good businessman as well as a good coach. So he's got a solid base to, to work from, but a lot of guys are, we're already in the garage sort of stages beforehand um, and everything is month to month. They wouldn't bind them to contracts, et cetera. They wouldn't formalize their business. I just had my idea because I, I know my two businesses were, I was running at 10% even though I was a, an essential service provider. But my customers went. So I sat on the couch for two weeks thinking and then I, I uh, developed a few things uh, and it was just some sanitary products that I, that I have and my thought was, um, obviously, I, I, I'm, I'm a businessman. I want to make money. But I wanted to offer, uh, with him being uh, 
sanitary products being the buzzword, I wanted to offer an opportunity for for guys at gyms to resell through their their, their networks um, so that they can generate income. It was um, by no means meant to um, drive them Ferraris. I wish I could have they sold enough, but it's more it's more just something that they can reach out to their networks and make a little bit of money instead of doing nothing because a lot of guys um, don't have other opportunities. So, I mean, I'm happy to share that idea on a private platform or whatever the case is, but it was just something thinking out the box um, to have a product that these guys could use their, use their network and then earn commission, earn commission on. Okay, cool. So I, I think we'll, we'll just drop it there. If, if there's guys that, that watch us, they're interested, uh, a bit of a sales drive, you'll help them out. They can get in touch with you privately. Um, it's not a Ponzi scheme, let me just say that. It is actually selling real products. So, there's, so there's, it's it's legitimately products. like no investment from you. You're just going <laughs> to no. get commission and uh, like it's, <laughs> there's no scam here. 100%. So just I'll swing back around to you. I want to go to cool. to Jamie, Rich and, and, and Soldier Boy. Um, so Gareth, w w one, of the, one of the big things that I wanted to ask you is, is perhaps towards the athletes you're a guy with, with a, a great sense for PR, marketing, and that sort of stuff. If you have any advice during this time to kind of stay relevant, stay in the picture, um, you know, staying uh, with your fans and, and your fan base and so on. And then the, the two boys on the top of my screen, Rich and Jamie, just to kind of give us a feel for, for the gym scenario, what's, what's going on in your guys' personal gyms and, 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 and what you're dealing with. So maybe we can start with you, Soldier Boy, just if you have some some legendary input for us there. Yeah, so I think uh, when it comes to the marketing of a brand or yourself, there's there's a lot of different avenues that you can attach yourself to keep yourself relevant. Um, you know, small example, going out and helping feed uh, feed feeding the communities. Um, that's a good. That's good. In essence, as much as it's helping, it's good exposure for yourself. It puts you out there, shows people that you're willing to take a chance to help others. Um, you know, I think the most important thing also is just to be consistent in the brand that you started building from the start. Like, don't now all of a sudden get scared because oh, there's something that's happening through your whole career or your span as a fighter. You're gonna constantly run into issues or you're going to run into massive problems and a lot of what guys do is they get to a stage where they kind of maybe they slump or things are just not working that well for them and then all of a sudden they decide oh, i've just got to change strategy and then they start running in different directions stay true to who you are as a person stay confident in your brand and then continue marketing in that way work ethic is 100 percent of 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 success whether it's being as a fighter, when you're fighting, when you're training, um, the same effort that you put into your your yourself preparing is the same effort that you need to put into your brand and creating exposure. Um, and you know, every little station, every little podcast, every little conversation with somebody counts because it might only be ten people, it might be five, it might be a hundred, it might be a thousand but it's still exposure. Those five people talk to five people. Hey, I was on a, I was on a, I watched a podcast and it had so-and-so on yet. It was, you know, he was really talking about relative things and at, pertaining to that subject. And it's amazing. Fighters have got to learn how to be diverse. I've always said that a, a key to a good successful um, brand is the ability to put yourself in if I'm, if I'm in a boardroom with CEOs, I need to be able to sit and have that conversation with them. doesn't mean that I have to be the best at the table or I have to be the smartest or the best businessman. I just need you how to know how to communicate. If I take you and I put you in, in a group of, of kids, make sure that you can spend time with children, invest in them, make it fun for them so they think and remember you. Same as if, you, if I put a fight in the room with a group of ladies, he's got to be able to connect with them on a, on a level and that leaves them with a good lasting impression. Um, don't be a one trick pony. Um, try and extend yourself and try things. You're going to fail. I mean, failure is unfortunately part of life and you can't be afraid of failure. I think that's something I've learned uh, over the years. Try, 
you know, something that some might seem small and insignificant at this time can end up being a massive gain for you in the future. So don't be scared of things. Try everything. Awesome. Thanks, Gert. That's great. And then <clears throat> just to, to Rich and Jamie, um, let's start with you, Rich. Obviously, you guys represent two, two massive gyms in the country. And I think a lot of smaller gyms would like to hear. I know, I know what it's like in business at the moment, dealing with landlords, dealing with all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm sure members are starting to drop off. So, so, so first things, Rich, let's start with you. What's from your guys' side, what's going on? Um, how are you guys dealing with it? And what are you doing in terms of keeping your client base secure, if I can put it that way? Um, well, the first thing is like, I think guys need to get a hold of their landlords. If you've had a, I'm like, we've got a really good relationship with our landlords. So, um, we've kind of like worked out the situation with that. In terms of uh, your gyms, you know, if you didn't have a strong community before this lockdown, that's when the problems are going to start. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's about having that strong community that understand the situation. Obviously, guys are losing their jobs because of uh, the whole thing that's going down and you can't blame them if they start canceling memberships yeah. and so forth. Um, there's only so much zoom training programming nonsense you can kind of do with our industry you need to be kind of in a class and 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 with contact with people so yeah there's a few things that we we have started doing and all of that but um the whole internet training youtube zoom stuff can only last for so long um yeah small groups of training uh, training at individuals' places. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Um, yeah, I think if you did, if you did have a good relationship with your landlord and you didn't have a strong community before this lockdown, that's when guys are going to start struggling. Right now, it's a little bit too late. Uh, shit's hit the fan. So yeah, I think everyone's just kind of doing what they can to keep keep um, keep the doors open. Um, like I said what we're going on to week nine or 10. So, you know, in, in, yeah, in, in the beginning, like the, the, the whole zoom YouTube training online programming was good, but it's, it's died down all over the world. Now there's only so much you can do. So, you know, setting up small groups of training, I think um, is kind of the only thing that's going to happen right now. And yeah, Jamie, it'll be the same sort of thing to you. I know you've, we, we've, I've spoken to both you guys about this in private, like what's what's going on at your gyms and stuff. And and this is one of the things I wanted to talk about because I mean, the the online stuff seemed like the perfect route in the beginning. And if and if it was five weeks, I, I think we all could have we all could have got through it. We could have you know given given curriculum and sent homework and done stuff like that. And you know, I mean, I was drilling with a pink unicorn at a stage just to kind of keep things going. And then that fo <laughs> that that unicorn Gracie, my friend. But that kind yeah. of falls that kind of falls away. And then it, you know, it's it's tough. It's 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 hard. It's an interactive sport. We we we, we need. Besides the sport itself, we want to interact with each other. So, so there is that big part missing. Um, just from your side, Jamin, what's what's been happening at, at GB Lobo? You know, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, same same boat as as Richie. We we've been very fortunate that our landlords um, have been very understanding and and very very kind to us. Um, you know, through this whole pandemic and whatever is going on, you you've either seen the worst side of people or the best side of people. Um, I think if you're fortunate enough to have seen the best side of people, um, you know, going forward, we, I don't know how we'll do it, but somehow we'll repay our landlords, you know, whether we, we add it on to the back end, but, you know, I think we've got to pay it forward. We've also thankfully had a, a very strong turnout of support from our members. So um, just a huge thanks to, to all of them. Um, you know, the, the, there have been some that have, have had to suspend their, their memberships, but you know, it's, it's, it's wacky out there. So you can't, you know, it's, it's understandable. Um, you know, and going forward, we'll have all the protocols in place and whatever, but at the end of the day, I mean, 
I think besides, uh, there's not, there's no other sports in the world with that you get that close. There's no other activity you get that close to someone with besides having your clothes off. So, um, you know, you, there's no two ways around it. And I don't think, um, I don't think anyone's keen to grapple in a mask. And if you see some of those pictures overseas of some of the gyms with their big grappling dummies and, and, you know, uh, huge mat space and socially distancing and whatnot, it looks great and all, but it's not feasible for a small gym to invest in 30, 40 grappling dummies or however much it is, you know. Um, I think Richie's right, small groups of, of training. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're all adults mm -hmm. or, or, you know, I, I understand parents keeping their kids away and, and the, the people that are, uh, that are dealing with other illnesses should be careful. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're all adults. We're all going to get this thing at some point. And uh, I think when we open, it will be under the understanding that, you know, before COVID, we, we required everyone to be neat and clean anyway, because of just, you know, the scarier things, staff, MRSA, ringworm going around in COVID. So, you know, it will be the same thing. But if, if you want to come and train, you'll have to understand that there is a risk that you may get it. And, you know, that's, that's on you. And if you don't want to train, that's cool. We'll still offer some Zoom classes because I think you've got to still offer something. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's tough. Who? It's you know everything's changing every day. You read one day it says this, the next day these people aren't spreading it, the next day this. Is, it's tough to keep up with what's going on. So I think you know you, we've all got to just help out each other where we can. Maybe when things get back to normal, we can do or normal do open mats or you know do traveling traveling open mats or rolls to help the guys uh, get back on their feet. But other than that, what more can you say or do really? Jamie, I just wanted to check. So, so in in your mind going forward, you, you're gonna you're assuming that for some time it'll be be smaller crowds, uh, smaller training groups, and then you're still gonna continue offering Zoom classes for those that aren't quite comfortable to come back. Is that you're gonna offer a couple of classes a day on Zoom or what's the deal? I think you know there there will be some. I know quite a few parents from our gym, and and there are some people who are hesitant to come back. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure whether they live with parents or or you know work with with elderly or, or whatever it is. But um, I think you know if, if people are still paying their fees, we can't expect everyone to rock up um, at at the class when it opens. And maybe what we'll do is we'll film the class and then send the class through, sort of a la AOJ style, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it's 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 kind of you can't just uh, cut cut those off that don't want to come and train because everyone's reason is valid if even if it's not in your mind. You know what I mean? For not sure. wanting to be in public. So. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I'll come to you. Like like I said, I've seen you. You've been traveling around. You've seen and spoken to different martial arts industries. Um, anything that sticks out in particular that, that guys are doing that's been a little bit successful or, or anything else you've seen you can add value for us? Yeah, I think so. I think first of all, uh, I'll uh, big up for, for, for the initiative. Um, so yeah, I have been traveling around. I've been chatting to, to, to a lot of the other big martial arts sort of fraternities, as many as I can possibly, possibly chat to just to try and get a sense as to what's happening and what's the impact. And, the reality is, is from what I can see at the moment, we're looking at about 40, 50 gyms across multiple martial arts that I know of right now that have closed sure. and probably will never open again. Um, and I suppose a lot of you guys sitting here probably know of a couple that within the next 30 days will probably end up closing as well. Yeah. Um, and for every month that we go on, it's just going to probably escalate and compound. But I think, you know, maybe I missed the trick, but for me, I thought that a lot of the conversation we were going to have today was going to be a little bit about what we can do now. Yeah. Because, Jamie, I understand what you're saying. I fully understand what Rich is saying, but a lot of those things are only going to happen once the government decides we can start something. And it's only then that you're going to be able to start doing anything. Until then, you know, we can sit here. Nothing's going to really help. So, so... What I'm proposing to do is through the show, my TV show is, is I'm starting tomorrow. I'm starting to get out as many brands, small brands as possible, get them to start advertising, get them to start marketing on the show three months for free 
to try and get their businesses back up and running so that they can at least get some exposure and people can start seeing their brands. And it's predominantly mm -hmm. FMCG brands where people can buy online and something I can say and say, check this out or just taste it and say, this tastes like, sh this tastes like shit, but buy it. It's cheap. Or this tastes great. You know, come and, you know, go get it. It's only, you know, the half off. Um, the other thing is funny enough, L, you mentioned uh, MMA South Africa. Um, I had a, a very animated conversation with, with Raymond Phillips this morning, um, following on my comment that I posted on MMA South Africa, uh, Facebook page. And I, I just told him categorically as, uh, as in the role that he fulfills in MMA South Africa and as an IMF director, I think he's being an utter asshole by um, personally promoting himself, but not doing the job of promoting the, uh, the federation for which he is accountable for, for which he has been elected as, and I said to him, with all due respect, Raymond, you better start putting this out for all gyms to be able to do this, um, or, or quite honestly, uh, guys are gonna come and take you apart. Because what you're basically doing is you're basically doing your own bed at the expense of others. Um, it seems he listened, changed it. There's a whole bang big thing that's going on. I'm not too sure how that's going to be vetted because now suddenly there's a vetting process and all that kind of stuff that goes into it. But it's very, very clear that um, it's, it's, it's not on, it's not right. And uh, he's meant to be there for the athletes, not for himself. I do understand that he's also in the same boat but he cannot be using a, a forum like MMA South Africa for own personal gain if he's not driving it for, um, for the federation, for the, for the people that are paying fees. I also said to him that it's kind of, it stands out kind of sort of harshly that, that MMA SA have actually on social media, on virtually all platforms, are doing absolutely nothing to assist their members, their gyms, their fighters, their athletes, nothing. Whereas you look at Muay Thai South Africa, you look at um, Taekwondo South Africa, you look at Judo globally, you look, I mean, just look at all these other federations. Go and have a look at the interviews that I've posted of Taekwondo, Muay Thai. These guys are putting together virtual world championships where you can actually work towards a medal, a trophy, all of these kinds of things. Now, I actually said that to him. I said, why aren't you doing a national MMA championship? Um, even if it is just at a fitness level, because right now, I mean, Gareth, you would know. Um, Jamie, you would know. Uh, Warren, yourselves. Uh, William, you'll, you'll know. I mean, combat sports is contact sports. And, and you can do as much training and shadow boxing as you like. It all falls flat if I can't feel that crack. I can't feel the roll. I can't feel the submission. All of that stuff disappears. You're going to have to pick it up again. And how long is that going to take for the guys to get back into a groove? And here I'm not talking about the pros. I'm actually a little bit more concerned about the amateurs. You know, how long is it going to be the amateur set to be able to get back into some form of groove? I mean, the professional mindset is a little bit different than the amateur mindset. So I would expect the, the pros to get back a lot quicker. Um, and it could be simple. I mean, Gareth, between yourself... Justin, uh, William, uh, Rich, myself, we must be able to come up with 10 or 20 businesses that put in two grand, you know, and, and guys can compete with that. Gyms can bring their guys to compete for that. Um, they can win a, most people sort of uh, competing in a shadow box tournament. The gym can walk away with four or 5,000 rand. That can go towards lights, water, can go towards roots, just to keep those shops, those places open. But right now, I'm seeing nobody try and do anything out of the ordinary, not even look at what the other martial arts federations are doing. And, dude, they are doing some fantastic shit out there. Um, white crew competitions, shadow boxing competitions, fitness boxing, you know, fitness competitions. And where are we sitting with MMA? No way. So Mark, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on that one first, if I can. Um... It's hell of a difficult. Uh, the board has gone sort of deadly quiet. Um, and even if they weren't 
even if we weren't um, thinking forward, we should be a shoulder and we should be offering a panel of advice. Uh, I mean, we chatted at, at, at KZN level about, we've been chatting a bit, uh, again, hands are tied, but we were chatting at, at, at a provincial level about putting together, my vice is a, he runs a shopping center. So he knows he, he is a person who is a landlord and he could offer advice, et cetera, on how to negotiate with landlords. Uh, Pavan is somebody who is involved in real estate as well. He could also offer an offer. And even if we weren't forward thinking in terms of how to generate income, I try, I, I'm trying that, as I said, I've, I've, I've offered that opportunity. But even a support structure, uh, something, a guidance thing, and, and even if it's just business guidance, because I, I chatted, chatted to G earlier, Gary, and a lot of guys don't understand the business side of things. Um, my committee is filled with guys that are, that are, are businessmen, which help. Um, but I, our hands are tied as mixed martial arts. I, I, I don't know about um, the shadow boxing things or whatever the case is, uh, but I'm open to anything. Anything that can um, generate income. And, and to me, 2020 and probably 2021 is about survival because I, I want gyms to stay open because you want that rivalry. Yeah, I mean, the, probably the people on the screen are going to absorb if gyms close down in case then, uh, they're probably going to go to William. If they close down in Joe Big, they're probably MMA gyms, they're probably going to go to Rich. You know, but that, that, that's great for them to train, but the problem comes in in terms of rivalry. So you've got two or three or five big gyms fighting each other, people are going to get tired of it because they won't fight themselves. Um, we've lost Mark, but uh, yeah, awesome. agreed, there should be something done. And this is this is a brainstorming session. Um, anybody that's affiliated or has paid affiliation fee should be able to have whatever advertising for free on this platform because they do get charged a yearly fee to compete and they should get something back, especially in this time. Like we ask our landlords, I can ask my factory landlord, you know, for these things. It's time, it is time to pay it back. Uh, we shouldn't be charging now, we should be helping promote it, we should be, should be giving ideas because the general guy is not, a general instructor may not be, like I said, the best businessman, but you know, he may be given an opportunity and he might take it with both hands. I just, but I just it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shit place to be. Someone wants to say something there, go for it. Yeah, so, uh, so I mean, I think for me, the way that I see it now, I think again, it just, just listening to the conversation that, that that's that's happened, I think it's just, again, showing the exposure of the holes that we have in South African MMA and as a community and as a governing body, how they're running uh, the industry, um, how does that tie into EFC, what is happening with EFC, where are they going, what are they seeing, it's lack of knowledge, there's no communication in terms of what's next. Um, I think if you look at the UFC and the things that they've done, They've been pretty vocal about everything. They've done their utmost. And yes, they're a business. So they want to do what's good for them in terms of creating revenue. But in a small way, they're the only sport that's operating at the moment. That ends a little bit of soccer. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we as a community in South Africa, we shouldn't be that far behind. I mean... We don't have stupid people in our community. We have incredibly intelligent people who are very business-minded. Um, we have a strong sense of urgency and hard work and those kind of things. And if we put it together, it could be a very good opportunity to take South African MMA by the, MMA by the scruff of the neck, rattle it a bit and grow it and make it what it should be. And that in re return we see how that benefits the gyms and how we keep the gyms. Because if we're losing gyms, we're losing athletes or the ability to find athletes. People are losing their jobs. You know, it's, it's, it's quite a serious situation. Yeah, definitely. I, I just want to say the, the, the MMASA thing, the, the big problem that I have, and it was one of the things I was sitting watching where this idea came into my mind is I was sitting watching and I'm sitting looking, okay, the, the EFC is back against the ropes. They were financially in big cut before all of this started. So they, they're obviously limited. My, my general feel with them is that there's, there's a big lack of passion there, which comes with having a business in that sort of situation. So 
you know, I kind of try to see how can I help, you know, the, the, that was like the Hall of Fame stuff, try and just keep the conversation moving. And actually it was Fernand Lopez, funny enough, who said something to me. He was like, <clears throat> he was thanking me to say, thank, thanking me for keeping the conversation going, for keeping the MMA conversation going. And that's where this all started for me. It's like, why is... MMA is saying not keeping a conversation going. EFC is trying to keep the conversation going, get to know the athletes. They're putting out old fights, which is great. They're, they're doing whatever they can, what, whatever's in front of them. Look, just for the record, I did send out messages to, to, to both sides. EFC people, uh, they, they didn't reply. There's not much I can do about that. I did send it out. I would have liked them to be here for that same thing, to kind of get a feel for where are we going. But... You know, I think Mark did raise a point that we've got to start to look at ways of what can we do now? What can we do now for our athletes? What can we do now for our gyms? Um, what can we do to, to keep going forward? This is, this is my big concern. I know, okay, I, I tried to reach out to Hideon Drotsky. I know his gym. He lost his gym. He moved his stuff into his garage. He's going to kind of train from there. Um, I know Rodney King's old gym, but he's not involved there anymore. That gym's closed down. A couple of guys are packing up other gyms, not just MMA gyms, packing their stuff up, heading into their garages. Guys are making some sort of plans. So I just want to offer a little bit of things that I've heard, which, which I thought were pretty good ideas. Um, Rich, we spoke about a online seminar. I don't know if that works. Uh, Jamie, maybe you would know. Gareth, uh, you did something with the EFC, like a a training, you know, like train with, with, uh, with Soldier Boy kind of thing. I think those things are all cool, but we somehow have to find a way where we can make these things start ticking over for a little bit of, even if it's not, even if it's not income. Let, let me let, let me put it to you from, from, from my business perspective. I'm not making money in my business. I don't think I'm going to make money in my business for a long time, but it's the same concept. I'm just trying to Stay in people's faces. We are here. Oh, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. When this is over, we'll be open. The first day we can open, we'll be open. And I think that reassurance back to your to, to your client base is gonna is gonna pay dividends in the end. You know what I mean? If you're constantly okay, like if they say, okay, Jamie keeps showing a move of the week kind of thing, they're still there. They're actually like sneaking into the gym maybe to film it or whatever it is. The gym is still alive and there's still something going on there. You know what I mean? So. I can maybe have a little bit more confidence in paying my subscription at the end of the month because I know the gym's going to be there. A lot of concern that, that I see from, from, from my perspective is people are like people bought vouchers from the beginning and straight away the questions were, what happens if you guys don't open again? And I'm thinking, I'm like, in my mind, I haven't even thought about that because there's not an option for me. We're going to open again, but you have to prove that to people. You have to show them that I'm here. You know what I mean? It's the same thing as a fighter. You have to show the promotion you're fighting for. I'm here. I'm active. I'm training. I'm ready to go as soon as I can go. You know, and I think that if, if, if we look at what's happened at the UFC, the guys that have stayed ready and been ready have, have been called up. Obviously, it's a limited in, in the States and it's going to open up now. But it's that same sort of stay in your face kind of mentality. The same sort of reassuring people that you're still around and there's there's still a future in this gym, in this athlete, or whatever it is. Uh, when I, re I had so many guys reach out to reach out to me about um, advice I wanted to offer, and I, and I heard some great things. Man, I, honestly, I heard some great things. Like guys were talking about, and and, and this is something I'm going to put forward now. What I want to get forward, um, setting up like what the UFC is doing, which is great, like virtual media days. You know, where where athletes can set up their own media days and, and interact with their clients beyond Facebook or Instagram Live, like this sort of setting, you know, where guys can hop on and ask a couple of questions, maybe get a few guys in, Rich, Gareth, uh, you know, wh whoever, get <clears throat> like five guys at a time, set them up with a, with, a, with a Zoom session, a live fan base to pop on and, and ask some questions. Those things are quite cool. Guys were mentioning things like um, uh, giving away like like athletes, for example, to do like a lunch, for example, like a 10-seater kind of lunch with the with the like fans that kind of enter, you know, to, to, to win that sort of prize. I mean, obviously, it's a bit weird to sit down with 10 people you don't know, but I think it's kind of par for the course if, if, you're, a, if you're an athlete, you know. Um, those, kind of, those kind of things, which I thought were quite cool. Like, I, I'm still a huge fan of the sport. So, in my mind, I would love to sit down with, with, with people that, that I really dig, you know. I think it's a cool idea. There's a lot of other things out there, but the big thing now is is – 
is what do we do moving forward? These are all great ideas. It's, it's, uh, it's resources, it's implementing them. Um, it's, there's obviously, it's, it's not something you can just flip the coin and, and these sort of things are not going to save your gyms. The landlords are the big one. Guys have to kind of sort out with the landlords um, and, and just move from there. But I mean, like, we think going forward, I'll try and maybe see if we can get some advice when it comes to dealing with the landlord. Look, that, that might be a little bit too late. I think the biggest thing here is... I don't think it's ever too late, bro. I think, I think it's... I think, and I think it's okay not to know. Like, I think a mistake that uh, that will, I mean, as an MMA as a board member, I would say a very big mistake is keeping quiet. And and it's it's better to communicate and say, guys, this is uncharted territory. I don't know what to do. I'm consulting. Like, I'm consulting these people. This is advice I can give. This is what I would do as a business owner. And I think the biggest thing is that. Uh, MMA say needs to be run like a business. Yeah. Um, I think that's very important. I think, I think we need to take away the federation style and run it like a business so that there is a slush fund and there is, uh, we need to formalize some sort of, uh, I want to say employment, uh, but where there would be an opportunity for there to be, uh, we would be a vessel to get money to gyms that could apply that we're compliant with uh, MASA, you know, you understand what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but hindsight is 2020, you know. I think it's okay to say, guys, I don't know what to do, but I'm working on that. It's not okay to just say, I don't know what to do and give up. It's 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 okay to vocalize and, and communicate and be ready and, and, and answer questions. Don't just hide. That's, that's a big thing. 